everyone. Last time we took a good look at the hardware of the MSP430, and in this video we're going to take a good look at its software. So we had recently been drawing the CPU with control unit having three states shown in the top left there, fetch, decode, execute, fetch, decode, execute, and so forth. But remember that the execute state is actually its own state machine with many different paths and states in each path. The number of paths in the state diagram is the number of instructions or operations the CPU can perform. The instruction set is determined by the CPU designers and is fixed by the state machine's hardware, of course. The MSP430, it turns out, has 27 core instructions. That means its state diagram has 27 paths. Of course, I don't want to draw seven, 27 paths. You don't want to look at 27 paths. So here I've only drawn three. Also, the MSP430 has 24 additional instructions that are emulated. An emulated instruction has its own mnemonic but the instruction is actually several of the 27 core instructions in sequence. Relating to the state diagram, an emulated instruction traverses the diagram more than once, the loop that is. When we program the device in assembly, we actually really don't care since the assembler recognizes the mnemonic and assembles the binaries anyway. To us, the programmers, an emulated instruction looks the same as a core instruction. It's still good to know, even though we might not necessarily be privy to it when we're programming an assembly. So the MSP430 has 51 instructions in total. Now in a previous video, we said that there were three classes of instructions, namely data movement, data manipulation, and program flow. Remember that each instruction has its own mnemonic and potentially an operand. The MSP430 has only four data movement instructions, as you can see here. And already we see that one instruction, pop, is an emulated instruction. Notice none of the VNZC bits, the status bits, are affected by data movement instructions. Uh, that should be expected, since the arithmetic logic unit does not perform or does not need to perform any calculations for data movement instructions. The ALU, which generates those status bits, are, uh, is used for data manipulation. Speaking of data manipulation, that's a whole different story. There are many manipulation instructions, and here are only some of them. Notice some are core and some are emulated, and the status bits may be affected, of course. So just looking at some, you can see there's add, there's add with the carry, add the carry to the destination, add decimals, tons of adds, <laughs> lots of subtractions as well. Notice there is increment and decrement. There's also increment and decrement by two. Why would we want to increment or decrement by two? You might want to pause the video if you want to think about it. But here's the answer. You might recall that each word in memory is two bytes wide and occupies two memory addresses. Yep, you got it. That's it. You, I'm, I'm sure you remembered that. <laughs> uh, these are the program flow instructions. Again, some are emulated and some are core instructions. The status bits are typically unaffected. Just noting some of them here, JMP is short for jump and is used as a loop or a jump back up to the top of the code or somewhere else in the code. The description you see says jump always. This is like a while loop that goes forever or the loop block in an Arduino code, a sketch. NOP is a curious little instruction. Uh, NOP stands for no operation or no op. Um, it still takes at least a clock cycle to execute, so this instruction adds predictable delay to the program. It often precedes JMP 
just to give a slight delay before looping for stability. The MSP430 supports both word and byte operations. Again, recall the address model we studied previously here shown. A word occupies two addresses and is two bytes long. Words are accessed by even addresses and bytes every address. An even address is the word's least significant byte and odd most significant. To specify an instruction to be a word or byte operation, we can append .w or .b respectively to the mnemonic. For example, we previously saw a move command with the operand src, DST, source, destination. If we append .b to mov, we will move only a byte from the source to the destination. If we append .w to mov, we will move both bytes, the entire word that is, from the source to the destination like this. Since the MSP430 is a 16-bit machine, 16 bits or two bytes or one word is the default. So leaving off the .b or the .w will default to the word, two bytes. All right, thanks. This was a more detailed look at the MSP430 software. Next time, we're going to study the rest of the Launchpad board.